I want to know what is the best way to optimize an article for SEO. If I could have my way, I would have three things. It would be cheap to do, it would be quick to do, and it would show results. And results to me are ranking higher on Google because if we rank higher, we get more traffic and we make more money. And once you begin making more money, it becomes a lot easier. But check out this channel. This is Words at Scale. Vlad, he is the owner of this channel. He's an excellent SEO and he gets into the weeds with SEO tools and like what is working, what's not working. So I highly recommend you subscribe to his channel. Um, this is Vlad here, right there. I was talking to him and I said, what have you been up to? And so partially this video is gonna go into his experiments and how we can parlay off of that, kind of piggyback off of his success. And our first stop is on readability. If I want to optimize my article online, I want it to rank higher, does the readability matter? In my previous video, I saw that uh, content score and LSI optimization does work. So it does improve for your rankings on average. But what I also found by doing linear regression that readability is a big ranking factor, almost as big as the content score. And I was very surprised by that. So Vlad was focusing on two scores from Neuron Writer, the content score as well as the readability. And the question is, does readability affect rankings? And it seems to. It seems to affect it. So check this out here. This is one of my recent articles on Bonsai Mary. It looks nice. Everyone's happy. It looks great. And if I were to push it to uh, mobile view, it looks great too. Love it. Very, very happy, right? looks very nice. So if I were to take out the text, parse it out and push it to Hemingway, this is what a lot of people use. Do you see up here grade 11? I mean, that's kind of eh. You know, that's, 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 that's higher grade level than I may want. It says aim for nine. So, okay, fine, what are we gonna do now? Well, let's look at the competitors, right? Here's my search term, I wanna rank for this. Here is the Spruce. My goodness, I'm always competing against the Spruce. Let's look at their article. It looks nice, they have nice pictures. Let's take their corpus, just a body of text. Let's push it here, and they have a grade eight. And that's the number one search position. Let's come here, number two search. Let's copy and paste, did that work? I don't know if that worked. Let's go back. Okay, I think we may have to click and drag this darn thing. They don't have too much text on this, which is why I was going after this. Let's push it here, grade seven. What was I at, a grade 11? And here's the last one, no thanks. Let's come here, Gardner's World. This is the number three search position right now. Let's go here, click this button. I think this is called Reader View, if it's gonna let me do it. Um, let's just control, oh, got it, I got it. Let's come here, push it here, grade seven. So mine was, what was mine? Mine was a grade 11. Let's just double check. Was mine a grade 11? This is mine. This is Bonsai Mary. Grade 11. The top three positions were what? Grade 8, grade 7, and grade 9 around there. So he may be on to something. So okay, readability matters. And the content score trumps it. Remember his graph? So let's go a little step further. Let's use this tool right here, search response. Io. Let's go to people also ask. I use this tool all the time. I haven't shown you too much on it, not yet. So I'm typing in up here surfing. And what this tool does well, amongst other things, it can show people also asks, and it can also show, I mean, I might as well show you right now, um, related searches. Let's go to surfing. Check this out. Uh, keyword surfing, stand by as we crunch the results. And it can show you trends. Look here, monthly SV trend. So search volume by month for the last 12 months. If you have certain tactics in SEO, this can help you a lot. And the tool is affordable, kind of crazy. But what we're after right here is going back. We are going after surfing topics for people also ask. I'm going to go to domains down here. This shows all the domains ranking for any question related to surfing. And I'm going to download the CSV. Now I'm going to work fast because I have this article and this article to go over. So check this out. What we do next, like I said, we're working fast. We're going to go to quick batch analysis and Ahrefs push all the URLs here and sort by DR. DR is just how strong the website is. So up here I have the weak websites, down here are the strong websites. I care about outliers like this one right here. This kind of weak website has 100,000 visitors per month and it's called Collections of Waikiki. And if we look at it first off, it doesn't look like a blog, right? It didn't get hit by HCU. Furthermore, what are its top pages? Because I want to know, what is the readability on them? Here's their top three pages, they're kicking butt. What is the meaning of Ohana? It means family, right? Everyone knows that. But more importantly, in Hemingway, it's a grade nine. Very, very nice. Let's come to this one. How much is a trip to Hawaii? A trip to Hawaii is expensive, I can tell you this much. 
Let's push it to Hemingway, a grade eight. We are seeing a trend here. And the third one is best time to visit Hawaii. Same thing. We are going to push it into Hemingway, a grade seven. There seems to be some correlation. Now we're jumping to this article on Search Engine Journal. Google says, or Google, don't rely on SEO tools to tell you how to write. How about that? Don't use SEO tools. That's kind of interesting. Let's read about it. So on Reddit, someone posed this question to John Mueller. I write for and manage a blog of Vietnamese travel agency. Many of the articles, H2s, contain the actual Vietnamese versions of the words. Basically, he's saying, do I use like uh, the, the actual words or what tourists are accustomed to? Am I correct in my assumption that the accents should not be present because the tar target audience tourists will not be using them, right? And John says, write in your audience language, which is a great tip for the headers and the body. Don't rely on SEO tools to tell you how to write. Do your own research. And I agree with him in a lot of ways. I do agree with this. I agree with that. Don't just rely, I would put don't just rely on SEO tools to tell you how to write. Because doing your own research is where you can find the opportunity. Using common sense and not being reliant on all these tools is an opportunity in itself. Now this here is intense. Nazir Torado wrote this a few days ago, November 20th. And it's, I mean, my goodness, I'm going to scroll down. This thing, this is a book, pretty much a book. And what it goes over, you know how Google is in a lawsuit and they're required to because it's, it's deemed in public interest. They're required to give over documents such as this one such as this one. This is a 104 page document. I'm not reading it on this video, nor am I reading this 50 pager. But what this gentleman that Zier has been able to do is extract some pretty darn interesting things. Now this first section here goes over the systems that Google uses to rank information. I mean, as SEOs, this is like pure gold, right? And it goes over, you know, here we have NavBoost. What does it do? It was launched in 2005, RankBrain. Some of these things we already know about. But as we come down, we go to a mom, Tangram and Glue. I think these are somewhat new, but the bottom line is, let me get to this point. With all of this, Google combines these algorithms to do what? They understand the query, right? Determine the relevance, prioritize the freshness, and this fourth one is so interesting, personalize results. And I believe Google is gonna to continue to personalize results because that's what TikTok does, that's what Instagram does. And what does personalization look like? Well, if you type in weather into Google, Google knows you know, via IP that I'm in Bel Air, Maryland. Great, and here's the temperature. I don't have to type in Bel Air, Maryland temperature or weather. So then if we take a step further, how is Google going to personalize and customize for, for users thinking about plants, house plants, indoor plants like my website? Now moving on to the IS score. Human evaluators play a crucial role. Did you know Google uses real people to evaluate the internet and parses that information? So human evaluators play a crucial role in the development and refinement of Google search products. Very interesting. Through the work, the metric known as IS score, so information satisfaction score ranges from zero to 100, right? Very interesting. Some graphics here. IS4 is perhaps the most important top line ranking metric, but it's still error prone. So check this out. They kind of like weight scores 100 being the highest or 1.0 and moving down in SERPs. Very interesting. But you know, we've seen, I've seen it on Twitter, people like show a query, like here's a query, look how stupid it is, Google's dumb and all this thing. Well, Google knows it's, it's problems. And here are the problems, temporal mismatches, it's discrepancies can occur because queries, evaluations, and documents may be different from different times. So like this one is an outdated article. So nonetheless, all of these Google knows about trying to fix it. But then, this is interesting. So I sincerely believe that human evaluators have been responsible for the effective function of Parasite SEO. Parasite SEO, we went over this, is when you can pay a big website that is almost infallible, I call them God mode websites, to rank for any term, right? Um, and then Danny Sullivan apparently said something regarding this, and they seem to be fixing it. This is their evaluator guideline. Very cool. And taking a huge step back, why do we care? We care because if we can figure this stuff out, we can rank higher. So the importance of clicks, it says, look at this. One of the things Google was forbidden to talk about was clicks. Internally, don't talk about it. Why? Why can't we talk about it? And then he says, do you remember this patent where they explained this uh, CAS model? So moving down, we've seen this one before. Why are clicks so important? Every click, every search and click provided by users contributes to Google's learning and continuous improvement. Yes, this is an older thing. This has been around for years and years. But if something's not broke, 
don't fix it. Now this here is Microsoft Clarity. I'm going to come back to this, a very important tool I've been using. But this bit right here got me thinking. Google and Chrome, right? Why does Google, listen, he says, Chrome is not just a browser, but a key piece in Google's search dominance, right? Why does Google care so much about Chrome? Why do they have these cheap Chromebooks that they sold you know, a while back? I bet you they sold some of them at a loss. Why? It's because if they can get everyone onto Google, they become the powerhouse. They retain their position because it's all about this feedback loop clicks, user engagement, right? Which is exactly why I've been pressing into this right here. So this is one of the URLs, a Monstera Care Guide, and this shows us, look, up here, scroll depth. People on average, they scroll down 20%. They spend 2.3 minutes, cool. But what we can also do is we can see people come onto the page and what do they actually do? So this is mobile view. This is someone that 4X speed, right? I can make it 8X, whatever. This is someone, and you'll see that they pause, they actually read the article. Never forget that. You are trying to cater to people who are actually gonna read your stuff. And once you figure that out, and you figure out information gains, it really, really matters. Now coming full circle to the readability scores, right? Grade seven, we saw a correlation, but it was a small sample size. But let's assume it was a big sample size and it actually was like, oh, a real correlation, huge data. It would be of two things. Was it because, does readability coincide with ranking higher because users like it? In other words, a user comes to this article, it's a grade seven readability, it may stay longer because it's easier to read. That's one scenario. Or is it because it has a higher IS score? Google just likes this information given to it in this way. Regardless, you know, I'm gonna be shooting for a tighter article right? I'm going to be shooting for something that the users are going to love, and I'm going to be monitoring what people do on my websites.